Hello, and welcome to Anatomy 25 on an online environment. Uh, this semester, we'll be working on some new um, techniques and models for how to teach anatomy online uh, based upon feedback we've gotten from many of our uh, professional programs and transfer programs um, that students have been going to to make it more effective so you actually learn the stuff that you will need as you move on to upper division classes or classes in your professional programs. Obviously, this class is geared towards folks going into uh, into healthcare professions. <laughs> so if that's you, then you're in the right place. And we'll do our best to make sure that you learn the material you need to succeed uh, as you move along. Um, so anyways, I want to introduce you to the basic structure of the class and how it flows. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, let's see, let's do that. Oh, that's ugly. <laughs> Anyways, um, so first of all, <laughs> we can uh, we can take a look at the basic workflow for the class. And the basic word flow for the class uh, is something like this. On Monday, uh, there'll be some stuff posted for a module. You'll read through the content. Think about how you would study for that review the assignments for the week, and then make a plan that, you know, gets all of the assignments done in a timely way. Now, that would be different, of course, for all of you. Uh, some of you would want to get it all done in one day and maybe do one big day of that, and other people would spread it out over the week. Um, it's kind of designed to be, um, you know, sort of the nine hours of in-class time, um, plus maybe the same amount or more of the uh, of studying and, and whatnot. So it comes out to be about, you know, a couple hours a day, you know, two hours a day should be sufficient. Um, some of you will be able to do it faster than that and others may take a little more time. Anyways, on Monday, you read through and see what you're doing for the week, uh, make a plan to do things. And if you're not sure about how to do these things, I can help you with that in the first couple of weeks, um, <laughs> sit down with you, we can do a Zoom meeting um, and, and kind of make and figure out how to make plans to succeed in this. Um, on Tuesday, you want to study the content. So if there's a list of words or things you have to know, maybe you make um, you know a list that you write down the words and their definitions, or maybe you sketch these things and label them. Kind of depends on the learning style you have. Some people would make flashcards. Um, anyways, you you think of a way to study the content and do that on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, there's a lesson, <laughs> uh, which is sort of an interactive um, online thing. Usually it's kind of like a, like a, it would seem like a quiz or an exam, but it's just to practice. And so you can do it many times. It gives you an idea of what kind of questions might show up on an assessment, what materials pertinent, how the language is used. It's really a practice thing. It's meant to be a learning tool. And that happens on Wednesday. And whatever you didn't quite get, like if you missed a bunch of stuff or you didn't get certain terms, then you might after that lesson study those to review them. Yeah, so you get better. And then on Thursday, there's a sketchbook assignment where you do something <laughs> physical and take photos of it. Usually, um, maybe you're sketching something and labeling it, or maybe you're uh, making a list or whatever it is. There's some activity to do on Thursday. Um, and hopefully that, that helps you also learn the material. You turn that in and then anything you're still not clear with, you know, a little more time studying. Friday, uh, there's a discussion to post to. And uh, and it's just, you know, a content based sort of applied some of the material applied to a discussion. And then on Saturday, there's a knowledge assessment, which is like a multiple choice matching kind of exam to test your skills uh, once again. Um, those are often you can do them twice. Uh, so if you're if you botch it the first time, uh, you should uh, study a little bit and then retake it. And then finally, on Sunday, there's an applied assessment. And this is usually where you take the material and apply it to a case study or make a, a, a teaching tool that you would use for patients or something like that using the content. So over the course of the week, you have both these sort of uh, basic knowledge assessments and then applied assessments for the same material. And the idea is to make that content um, as useful as possible for a future <laughs> clinical setting. So um, let me go to the, the Canvas page and um, and we'll go through some uh, some stuff <laughs> about how the uh, how the Canvas page is organized for the class. So I'm going to go down here to this anatomy. There's a home page 
which is a little discussion of, um, of the class and how it's organized and why it's organized the way it is. Um, mostly, I would start on the um, modules um, link on the far left here in this menu. And this has will have all of the course content <laughs> organized by week. So you can scroll down. The first one is our orientation and syllabus. And then you go down to the next module unit one and that's the following two weeks worth of work and it's all organized and you can just keep scrolling down and it's all organized that way um kind of going back up not to make you too dizzy <laughs> but um in the first orientation and syllabus module i'd like you to go through each of those pages um if you're a veteran student and you know how to do things like you don't need to worry about the technical support just click through that and go through all of them uh, all of the different pages just to make sure. If you are a new student <laughs> or this is this online environment is new to you, um, then there's a lot of help in this first module uh, where you can click to get help with Canvas and, and various other things, as well as like, you know, how we communicate in the class and uh, materials. There's really no materials required for the class. But anyways, all of that stuff is, is here, attendance policies, grading, everything you need to know. Um, I would like to point out something unusual. Um, first of all, um, let me click on this assignment, how I earn my grade. Um, I'm going to uh, give you guys some options on how, how you get graded in the class. You can do, um, I'll scroll down to the options. Uh, you can do a regular old percentage on Canvas and that's perfectly fine. Uh, the different categories of work, like discussions versus, you know, knowledge assessments, etc., are all broken down into 20% categories, and your grade can be calculated that way. However, not all of you are equally um, skilled at all these different assessment types. So in the first three weeks, you can kind of play around, get used to these assignments, and then you can make a decision <laughs> on how your grade will be. So these are different ways you can get an A in the class. Um, for example, um, you can you can get 70% uh, on all of the sort of formative assessments, which are things like the lesson and the sketchbook, which would be like the lab and the discussion. And then 90% on the, on the sort of um, summative assessments, knowledge quizzes like the multiple choice type standard test, and then the applied, which is this thing where you make like a teaching tool or something uh, using the content. Um, so if you're if you're you know really skilled in exams and and you like to focus there, then you're you can choose this. Um, in the extreme, in in grading pattern three, you can say, you know what, I don't even want to do the lessons. I don't want to do the sketchbook. Um, I'm just going to go ninety percent on these three items, and and that's how I'm going to get my A. And this is a good option for people that have that have taken a lot of classes or used to getting A's. Um, you have all the skills you need to do this. Um, then that's a good choice because I don't want to, you know, I, I mean, I want you to choose. And other people are like, man, I hate tests and those big formative assessments. You know, they're really hard for me. Um, so I'm going to focus more on the. Uh, I'd like to to get A's on the on the more um, effort based you know, where you really work with something and you can assess it to yourself before you su submit it. And and the things like big multiple choice test, I just want to be able to get a C on it and still get an A in the class. And so you get to choose. And once again, you can also just say, no, whatever, whatever's on Canvas is fine. But this way you have some um, say in how your grade is uh, done and um, based upon your skills. Um, a thing to note here um, is that um, if you have other ideas <laughs> about like how you want to demonstrate your skills in this class and, and you know, the basic assessments, you still have to know all this stuff, but I'm willing to entertain other possibilities. For example, I've done oral exams uh, where people, you know, we have a talk. <laughs> I say, all right, tell me about this or, you know, describe to me this. Um, I'll show you a thing and you say, well, like, what's this thing? <laughs> and, and that's fine. Um, so we could do a more, uh, you know, a, a more in-person sort of thing via Zoom. There's lots of ways to be assessed. Um, and I just want you to think about what your skills are.
And we could do a Zoom meeting, uh, like an office hour, and talk about this if you're not sure, like what would be best for you, and I can help you decide. Okay, so there's that assignment. That's kind of weird, <laughs> kind of different. Um, scrolling down, you'll, you'll work through this first module. I just wanted to show you in a typical unit, uh, this is what you'll see. Um, there's a little introduction with the getting started stuff, tells you kind of about how this module is organized. It has all the different objectives, things that I hope you will be able to do, um, and then kind of basically how to navigate through. So that's just kind of a brief introduction to, you know, what the module holds. The first unit is a two-week unit to kind of get you used to the flow and pattern. Um, all of the lessons, um, they're, they're, they have a little pink brain, looks like some bubble gum. <laughs> and they're they're usually done in a, in a different um, program uh, called Course Art. And in there, it, it, we can kind of go through, there's some... Uh, activities. Here's the list of things. Each one has a little time on it. You can see how long it takes. Um, you know, and, and if we just click, I wanted to give you an example. There's like a list. There's the content that I expect you to know. And then there's usually like, this is a flashcard, you know, um, application that you can run. There's a whole bunch of other different things you could do. Uh, th and these activities are intended to, to deliver the content. Like, so here's the stuff you need to know. There might be uh, lists like there were on the last one. There might be diagrams like there are here. And I expect that you'll know this material. Um, this is kind of like the textbook. <laughs> um, it's all the content built right in. There's always a little activity, you know, where, you, you know, you can test your knowledge about these things. But the idea is that you, uh, you know, you're going to learn this material and be able to use it. So. That's kind of how the activities are laid out um, for the lessons. So let's go back and look at the other types of things. The sketchbook um, is an assignment of some type um, where you do something. <laughs> like this one's organizing your week <laughs> and a little, you know, little thing. Um, you can also um, make flashcards, sketch body cavities. Um, make a table of the different organs in each area. So this is like stuff you'd write down um, and you can turn it in. Um, if you do it in an analog version, like you do it on a piece of paper, then you would use something like Cam Scanner, a scanning app to scap, scan in all the sheets into one doc, send it to me as a PDF. Um, you can also do it digitally and submit it that way as well. So the idea is this is you're you're actually these are like active studying things you, you know sketch and label uh, make a table of make some flashcards, and um, and so basically you're studying while you're doing this so it's just a way of like you know keeping you up with the content and stuff like that. If you have questions, here's one of my crappy sketches. This is kind of what it looks like. <laughs> so I sketched this is one of the assignments and notice I put my name on it, signed it, and dated it. So all of your sketches need to have that uh, for the sketchbook assignments, and uh, and then you're good to go. <laughs> and uh, so that's how the sketchbook thing works, right? And and those happen on on Thursdays, on Fridays. There's some sort of discussion, right? So you have a first post and a discussion online, and it says here this one's a, a, a set of body movements using the terminology that we learned, right? So back in the lesson, there was a terminology set for movement. And I'm asking you to pick a movement like, you know, swinging a baseball bat and then describe that using proper terminology. Um, and this is kind of a puzzle where you're going to describe the activity using proper terminology, but not tell anybody what it is. Like, and then people, you know, you're going to post to your colleagues uh, things, guessing what what motion they've described. And then uh, and then at the end, you uh, you post your answer. So it's like a little practice um, thinking about how to use proper terminology for body motion and position. Okay, so that's uh, an example of a discussion. The discussion is always you post your first post on Friday, and then you have a full week until the next Friday to do all the interaction parts. So it's a, it's a week-long sort of thing. Starts on a Friday. Um, then you'll note down here the knowledge assessment. Um, it'll be done in different ways. Mostly you'll open... Um, a, uh, a tab once again in another program. 
and uh, it'll have the assessments in there. And remember, uh, this is be due on Saturday. You can do it anytime during the week. Um, has some quiz stuff. And basically, you kind of go through. It's like a multiple choice thing. Uh, you know, here's matching an organ system with its function. You know, um, some multiple choice, typical exam kind of stuff. Um, you always get two tries at these. Yeah. So you can go through them. And then if you didn't learn, like, oh, man, I missed all of those, like all of the organ systems and functions, say. And then you can study that and then take it again. Um, I would uh, obviously maybe start this a little early so you can, you know, get it done in time. But uh, anyhow, that's that's kind of how that goes. Um, and then the uh, final, the applied assessment, just to give you an example of that, um, these are um, applied, like if you were in a clinical setting, how you would use this. So a lot of them have to do with like you communicating with patients. So you're taking this, this proper terminology in this case and applying it to, uh, to you know, clinical settings. So uh, for example, describe the process, what's happening to a patient during the abdominal exam. And the main thing is you're you're explaining like the regions and what organs are in there and stuff like that. There's a little um, link here to what an abdominal exam is. It's basically just looking around the abdomen. You're pushing in different places, but the question is where in the abdomen are the different organs? And so, and then then there's a shoulder one where you're like basic shoulder exam. You know what are the motions and things you're doing there? Um, later on, we'll build on these things. So, for example, this is like um, you know, basically how you're moving in a shoulder exam, you know, and then later on a subsequent assignment, it'll be like which muscles were in there, which bones were in there, et cetera. So you're going to learn, uh, there's a lot of repetition about regions and different parts of it and aspects of it using proper terminology. So this is a much more applied sort of thing. And um, these, uh, these can be all kinds of different things. <laughs> So if I say here, for example, describe the movements of the body during the basic parts of the shoulder exam. Okay, so um, so what do you turn in for this sort of thing? <laughs> it turns out you turn in, you, it could be a lot of things. You can just write it down, <laughs> right? Um, you know, a written description of, of this. Um, you can also do like a video of, of you going through the motions and describing them. Um, you can do an audio only file, right? Where you're just, you know, verbally discussing it. Um, you can make like a little PowerPoint, <clears throat> whatever it is you like, whatever media form, written, whatever that you like, you can do. Um, you might keep these <laughs> in, in some way uh, because they're very useful uh, later on uh, when you want to demonstrate the kind of things that you can make for patient communications. In fact, a lot of people that go into, you know, medicine end up doing a lot of patient sort of education stuff. And, uh, and so this is really good practice for those sorts of skills. And this type of assignment was one of those that was uh, suggested to us by professional programs like, hey, you know, they need, students need to know how to communicate this knowledge to a patient and in an applied setting. So that's what all these assignments are about. Okay. Anyway, so that's all the types of assignments you'll find. Um, like I said, the first one is a two-week module. Then there's a one-week module following that on the cells, tissues, and integumentary system. And then another two-week module, the musculoskeletal system has a lot of muscles and bones and things. So it takes a little longer to know that. And then we just move on and we'll kind of go through each organ system like that. Um, initially, the first four modules for the first half of the semester are posted and I'll post the others uh, as we move along. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how the class is organized and how it flows. Uh, once again, um, it's sort of designed to be sort of a weekly uh, practice. Um, you have to kind of decide how that goes if you get stuck or you're having trouble with this stuff in the first couple of weeks, that's a great time to do um, a video conference. Um, I have office hours posted um, in my uh, in the syllabus. So if we look at the syllabus for the class, it has the outcomes. It has the how the grades are weighted. This is the standard model I mentioned before that there are options for this. 
Um, and then there's this set of office hours. Um, I have office hours on campus in E105 Mondays, um, Tuesdays, and the you know the and Wednesday and Thursday. These are just general times um, that I'm you know most open, <laughs> that I keep open for just for this class. So if you need to do a video conference, these are good times. But as it says down here, if these do not work, and you're like, man, you know, I really need an office hour at 3.30 on Tuesday because of my other classes or whatever, then, you know, message me right away and we'll set up a, a time for that. I can always switch things around uh, to help you guys out, especially in the first several weeks. Super important that you get things clarified and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> I don't understand this at all and I need some help. Um, the other thing uh, is that in the first couple of weeks, in particular, as we move through the semester, um, I will be giving you um, lots of comments on your assignments. So if we scroll down, like say your first sketchbook, you know, you turn it in and maybe, you know, you get it back and you're like, oh, wow, I got a C on this. You know, why? I will give you all kinds, like a whole list. In fact, the first time you turn something in, the first sketchbook, the first discussion, et cetera, um, as long as you post it on time, I won't take any points off. But what I will do in the comment section is go through and give you a list like, you know, normally I would give this a B and here are the three things you need to fix to make sure that's an A in the future. So at the beginning, I, I grade really light. You, as long as you turn things in on time and complete, I will give you full credit. And then I'll give you a bunch of comments like, and if you want an A on this in the future, make sure of these things. And that way, um, right up front, you'll get lots of comments to make sure you're successful. Uh, my goal is that, <laughs> that both you learn something. <laughs> and so when you move on, you have all of the knowledge and skills you need to succeed in say physiology, or as you move into your professional programs, you know, you're not embarrassed by not knowing any of the terms or any of the, the, the applications. Um, and then, and then too, I'd like to see that you get an A, right? I mean, all of you need good grades. I understand that completely, um, but I want it to be real, right? That A should mean something. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do. Um, anyhow, so, uh, that's it. <laughs> um, I look forward to working with you this semester and um, enjoy. <laughs>